Hello, I am Nosipo and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, please remember to like and click the subscribe button. So, are you one of those people who either has a vegan or vegetarian friend and every single time they're around you, you have absolutely no idea what to feed them? I know personally with my friends, whenever I come around, example, Tay Tay's house, she always just puts a platter of fruits in front of me. I am assuming that she really has no idea what to cook. Or my other friend completely avoids having me around because every single time she starts stressing when she has to think about what in the world is she going to feed me. So if you are one of those people, I am here to show you today that you can make your normal food and customize it to make it vegetarian or vegan. Stay tuned. <music> So to create this meal, you are going to need chopped onions, as chunky as you want them to be. You are going to need some grated ginger and you're going to make two bits of it because the one meal is going to be vegetarian the other one is going to be um, seafood. Then you are going to obviously need your pots. You are going to need um, some vegetable stock, a meat alternative, um, some chopped up stir fry. You will need your own sort of milk alternative. This is vegan cream. If you are vegetarian, you are more than free to use normal cream. Then a seafood mix, because like I did mention, I am customizing a seafood meal. You are going to need some olive oil, salt of your choice. I always use aromat. You are going to need some mixed spice of your choice. And then I am using butternut spaghetti. Please don't complicate your life. If you are a person who does not have this, you can use normal spaghetti and then some customized homemade fish spice or you can use store-bought fish spice. And then I'm also going to use some mixed masala. Again, you can just use a store-bought one. So once you've got all your ingredients chopped ready and your stove is on, I hope my stove is on. Okay, I think my stove is on. So once you have everything ready, it is time to get cooking. So the first thing that you're going to do is to get your olive oil and then get like a normal spoon, nothing complicated. And then you're going to put about a tablespoon of olive oil in each pot. Okay. Um, try not to use too much oil in your cooking, it's not the best idea. But olive oil is obviously healthy for you. It's got all sorts of like nice nutrients and stuff, so please try to use that. If you do not have olive oil, please do not complicate your life again. Use normal canola oil, sunflower oil, or whatever it is that you have at home. Because um, we do understand that olive oil is not always the cheapest ingredient. So if you don't have that, you are more than free to use whatever it is that you have at your disposal. And then... Just wait for your pots to heat up, I think. Let me just turn the heat up a little bit. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to do is add your onions. So like I did mention, I am cooking two separate meals. So in this bigger pot, it's going to be the seafood pasta. And in the smaller pot, it's going to be the vegetarian or vegan one. Um, just so that you can see that you can use the exact same ingredients. And the only difference is literally going to be the fact that the one has a meat alternative and then the other one has seafood. Okay, so you're going to grab your onions. Hopefully your hands are washed. Please remember to wash your hands. If you watched the first video, you will see that I am very pedantic about hand washing. So you're going to add your onions. And then to each part. And like I said, you can make them as chunky as you want to make them because obviously it is, we are using stir fry and it is, you want texture. When you cook vegetarian or vegan food, you always want your food to be textured. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see what's happening. Okay. And then you are going to just move that around. the one part is hotter than the other let me actually switch that up okay and you're just going to wait for your onions to become a little bit golden brown and try to keep the heat on high okay 
Okay, so in the beginning, because I am still obviously making um, onions and it's still vegetables, you can use the same spoon. But then when you start adding meat, if you do live with a vegetarian or a vegan person who's very strict about that sort of thing, you are going to need two separate wooden spoons. Okay. So just keep that in mind because some people are very strict about that sort of thing. Okay, then when everything is frying, you are then going to start to add your ginger. So again, you are doing the exact same thing in one pot that you are doing to the other pot. Hopefully I don't burn anything because it does mean that you need pay attention to two pots at the same time which is kind of a thing Everything is heating up like this, you then start to add your stir fry. So, you're going to need literally a handful of stir fry for the little vegetarian pot that I'm making. You can maybe two handfuls. And then for the bigger pot, you're going to take the remaining stir fry and then just toss it in there. This is pre-made, like I said, because the point is to make a very quick meal. And keep the heat on high just so that it doesn't get stewy. Because sometimes what happens is that if you decrease the heat, then what happens is that it does become like a little bit of a stew. And you don't want that at the moment. You want all the water to evaporate. So until it gets to the point where you want it to become saucy and creamy, try to keep the heat on high at all times. Okay, so just going to continue to stir both pots. And then you leave that on the heat for about five minutes and then I'll be back with the rest. Okay, so now everything is frying very well and all the water has absorbed. And then this is the point where you are going to add either your seafood or your meat alternative. So these are fries meat style chunks and I'm going to add that to the smaller part. And then this is again, like I said, a seafood mix and that one we add to the bigger part. Okay. and then you just mix it up yet again get most of the water to absorb okay so this is a point where I said now you need to pick a wooden spoon and whatever you do in this part you do not stir with the other part so is that even English I'm not even quite sure but basically like a nice little colorful situation happening in that part and then move over to the other part not as colorful as yet. And then you can see starting to fry up and look nice. Then when this happens, we are going to start spicing things up. So like I said, we do have um, pre-made spices here at home, but obviously not everyone has these things. So you can just use like standard fish spice or your normal masala it just depends on how hot you like your food so you're going to grab another first spoon and only in the seafood part are you going to add the fish spice just about a spoon of that okay. and then in both parts you're going to add a spoon of this if you are a person who really likes things hot you can then go ahead and add two spoons but I'm just gonna add one today and have in a piece okay and 
then you're going to add your aromat or salt if you like salt it's fine you can use your normal standard um, table salt it's obviously a personal choice and then you do the exact same thing in the other parts and then you're going to take some mixed herbs again what you do in the one part you're going to do the exact same thing in the other part okay and then mix it up then just remember that the one is obviously for seafood and the other one is the vegetarian one okay so when you see that the water from the seafood has gone down you can turn down the heat a little bit because now we want it to become creamy and saucy i did forget to mention when i was mentioning the ingredients that you are going to need um some flour so like the normal flour that you would use to bake etc you are going to need that and the reason we're going to use that is just to thicken it up and make it like a nice creamy sauce mm -hmm. you can also use maizena or cornstarch if you do have that if you don't have that like i'm saying keep your life simple and use normal flour okay then you'll also stir up the vegetable part i actually feel like i'm neglecting this part which is actually mine and if you are you know two timing like i am right now um <coughs> your the spices if you are two timing there's a high chance that you will end up burning so you kind of have to pay equal attention to what is happening in both plates which is kind of hard so if i do burn anything we are still going to eat it burnt okay like I mentioned, you are going to need um, what was this? vegetable stock. So you're going to pour your vegetable stock in this part and a little bit of vegetable stock in this part as well. Okay. So I used um, stock cubes as the vegetable stock. Um, like I said, no one has time to brew vegetable stock from scratch. You can if you are that person. You chop up vegetables, put a whole lot of spices in it, and make almost like a stew so that you get all the flavors out of there. And then that becomes vegetable stock if you are that type of person. But if you are just hungry and you don't have time to do that, then you just buy a normal stock cube, but just make sure it says vegetable. So, if you have a look, it is looking stewish, and it's bubbling, and it's looking like quite a vibe. And then this side it's also stirring up and bubbling but like you can see it is a little bit liquidy and we obviously don't want it to be very liquidy we want it to be creamy saucy and spicy so this is the ingredient that i did forget to mention because at this point you are going to need your flour let me turn down the heat just a little bit actually it is too hot so you're going to add two tablespoons of flour in each side. I don't think you're going to need more than that. If it is still very liquid, you can obviously add more. Okay, and then again, just remember to mix it up. If it does become too thick at a certain point, then we are going to be adding soy milk so it's not like a train smash. And then later on, before the end, we are also going to add the cream. So, perfect. So you can see here in this particular dish, it's nice and thick from the flour. Just make sure that you do, do keep stirring just a little bit so that it doesn't have like a very raw floury taste. And then you do the same on this side. So this is how it starts out. And then you just mix it up to a nice creamy texture. Which out. I actually feel like I'm gonna burn something, but it's fine. Okay, once you've mixed the flour into both pots and you've turned the heat down at this point, you are going to add your um, milk alternative. Like I mentioned, if you are vegetarian, you can use normal milk. If you are obviously just making your normal sea seafood pasta, you can add your normal milk. If you don't like soy milk, you can also use almond milk as well. 
and there is rice milk as well in the market. It is obviously personal choice, whichever side of the fence you fall on, and that is the milk that you'll be using. So you just pour the milk based on how thick you want your sauce to be. Like I mentioned, if it does become too watery, then you can always just add more flour. So it's nothing to like worry about. And then you just stir. So it does change color and become creamier and saucier. So it does become like a creamier, it's starting to look like some creamy pasta, which is obviously what you're trying to get at. And then do the same on the other side. So like you can see, it is literally not the hardest thing in the world. It does take obviously some concentration and a bit of multitasking, but I do this almost every single day. So I've become used to it because you obviously can't force everybody to not eat meat. So yeah, do not impose your opinions and lifestyles on other people. Okay, so they're both equally creamy. I actually feel like they are a little bit thick. But actually it's perfect. Double check this side. We can. So then you're going to take your vegan cream. If you are not vegan vegetarian, like I said, you can use your normal cream. Don't complicate your life. And then just shake it up a little bit. And pop it open. So half of this, we're going to pour it into the fish. And then the other half, we're going to pour it into the vegetarian dish. Him. and then once you've done that then you mix it up so like you see you've got a nice thick consistency and you just keep stirring that until you get the consistency that you want in both parts And then you can just turn the heat down a little bit more because now you just want it to simmer for about five to ten minutes. And at any point, if it does feel like it is getting too thick, you will then just add a little bit of soy or almond milk. So we leave that pot alone. Close it up. And then we stir this one up. This actually looks quite good. Okay, and then we leave both pots to simmer for about five minutes. So you can see that it is now well cooked. Never leave seafood for too long, and even the chunks on this side are pretty much done. And then this is the part where you will either do one of two things. So you're either going to make your normal spaghetti the standard way, or you are going to use this butternut spaghetti. You can buy from your normal Checkers Hyper. Woolworths also has it, and another, depending on obviously your budget, you'll determine where you buy from. And all that you do with this packet is that you punch a hole a small little hole in the corner a minute if that is not what you're doing and you're making normal pasta or spaghetti then obviously you cook it based on the instructions on the bag and then pasta usually takes about five to ten minutes if you add it to the stove while everything is like boiling and hot it does take five to ten minutes to become al dente that basically just means well cooked but not too like soft and soggy so that's the texture that you want because you don't want it to be pouring like a, a seafood situation or anything like that and like overcooked pasta you want it to have like a little bit of a bite so 
that's the point of our dante then when we come back i'm going to plate it up put it all together sprinkle some vegan cheese on the top and voila. so the two to three minutes are up and this is basically how it looks like i don't know if you can see and then we're just going to take half of it like I said, if you don't want to buy these things and you do not want to come back into life, use normal fetties and monies. Okay, so I'm first going to dish up the seafood plate. Take it hot. And then this is optional. So I've grated some vegan cheese. It doesn't melt like normal cheese, but it does look like the normal cheese. And then just going to put that on top. If you want it to be a little bit extra, which I do, and I like hot food, just take a little bit of cayenne pepper. Sprinkle that at the top. And this is basically how it looks like some butternut vegan pasta and then on this side we've got seafood looks exactly the same vegan seafood vegan what's the difference so I am Nasipo also known as Veg Virgin thank you so much for tuning in